welcome back to another insightful and exciting episode of Me and My Health Up. I'm your host, Anthony Harcher. I'm a clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. The purpose of this podcast is to enhance and enlighten your well-being, and I will be doing that for you. And today's topic is being mentally tough in a virtual reality world. Mentally tough in a virtual reality world? I think you can relate to that. It is that hybrid working situation, working from home remotely, working anywhere in the world remotely. I know people are doing remote working in Bali and also a bit of face-to-face physical in-person time. However, we're spending large amounts of time working from home and so it can become difficult creating those boundaries and how to keep upbeat energy during the times you're working virtually, where you don't have other people's energy around you to keep you up and to keep you very vitalized. So this episode today is going to help you be tough, mentally tough in a virtual reality world. So what's in store for you today? We're going to talk about how to remain healthy in a virtual reality world, tips and tricks to creating uh, safe boundaries, I meant to say. So the tips and tricks for safe boundaries, how to stay on course with a positive outlook, stress management practices, of course. So we want to uh, stay on track in terms of delivering our deliverables and meeting our objectives uh, whilst working remotely. And also we want to look after ourselves in terms of managing that stress because you might not have someone close by to relieve the valve, so to speak. Uh, in the office, you can always grab someone aside, go for a coffee and, uh, and, and share with them them in terms of what you're going through and sort of release that pressure. So working from home, you don't really have someone, you might, you may not have someone close uh, close by where you can release that fuse or <laughs> release the pressure on the valve. And then lastly, it's staying and remaining connected in a virtual world. So how, how do you do that if you're predominantly working? So some offices are working 100% still remotely. So how do you stay connected in a virtual world uh, or working in a virtual world? So that's what we're going to cover today. And let's get into today's topic. So how to maintain that mental and emotional well-being in a virtual world? Well, we need to look at a holistic health and balance approach. So it is setting up your day and working your day based on your priorities. So what's most important to you? So it is a planning element, a huge planning element. So what goes in the diary, you'll generally execute. If exercise isn't put in the diary, then it won't happen. Uh, So actually, if exercise is important to you and staying healthy is important to you, And I recommend, certainly, if you're working from home remotely, in order to keep the energy up, you want to be moving the body. So scheduling in exercise, making time for exercise, actually having it as a meeting with you to do exercise. So factoring that in every day. So look at your week ahead and work out where your meetings are and where you can squeeze in some exercise. And that's probably one of the benefits of working from home. If in between meetings, you might be able to get out for walk around the block, come back and focus for the next meeting. So it can be really helpful. Or if you go out for a sweaty workout, you can come home and shower in your own shower and uh, put it on a new outfit um, very conveniently. Uh, so one of the benefits from working from home is that you know having that element of flexibility. So leverage it. Make sure you factor in exercise into your day. Do yourself a favor and don't book back-to-back meetings. Avoid booking back-to-back meetings. Allow a 15-minute buffer. This is critical for maintaining your well-being, your energy throughout the day, and also your focus and attention and presence in meetings. So that 15-minute buffer enables a reset. And with that 15 minute buffer, you can get up, stretch the legs, move the body, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, mentally reset for the next meeting, as opposed to just rushing from one meeting, being late to the next, and then trying to catch up and your headspace is still in the last meeting. So clear the headspace. Dr. Adam Fraser, did a lot of work on this around performing performing athletes, high performing athletes. And he found what separated the top performing athletes from the not so elite. Uh, well, they're still elite, they're still professional athletes, but what you know what made the top 10 the top 10 versus the rest of the field? And it was what they did between points. It was how they reset their mind between points, how they didn't carry the bad point from the previous game 
into the next game or the next round or the next five minutes of the game or whatever after a pause in play. So they were meant they mentally reset themselves and they got present again, fully connected, and they were able to e- execute a lot better than the previous point, previous round, previous five minutes. So uh, yes, we can have those not so great meetings, but don't carry the not so great meeting into the next meeting. Clear the head, get present again and turn it all around. And you can do that by allowing some time, reset time between meetings. So don't set hour long meetings and then have back to backs all day. Uh, it's, It's not productive. It really isn't. Uh, because your your mind's everywhere, it's scattered, and you feel overwhelmed at the end of the day, and you feel really lethargic and de-energized. Set 45-minute meetings or 50-minute meetings, or even if you can squeeze it into half an hour. So always question the length of the meeting, and don't allow extra time. A- allow less time. Put the pressure on so that you, you get to the point, so people stay on point. You have a parking lot for those lengthy discussions that are really off-topic. Uh, park them for another meeting or set up a separate meeting for those off-topic conversations. So allow yourself the freedom to have space between meetings. Really important in terms of that planning out the day. Focus on the most important things that you want to get done for that day and tackle the most important things first up off the cuff. It's when you've got the most energy. It's when it's there's less interruptions. Otherwise, you'll find excuses. Other things will come into your inbox. You'll find other distractions that will just carry you away from the most important and pressing task. Get that most important pressing task. You'll feel like you've accomplished something. The hard thing's done. Okay, it's out of the way. It's progressing forward. So as uh, Stephen Covey said, uh, eat the eat the frog first. <laughs> that tough thing. Do the f- tough thing off the bat. First thing, whilst you've got energy, whilst there's less disruptions, get it done. It's like my podcasting. I am pretty much predominantly do all my podcasting in the morning because it's when I'm most energized. It's when I've got most coherence in terms of my thinking. I could not have fluent, coherent thinking in the evening. Sometimes I don't have it during during the day, but you can imagine what it would be like in the evening, <laughs> even worse so. So certainly do it. Work around your energy when it's most optimal. And and when you have like those hard things that need a lot of concentration, do it when there's least amount of other activity or disturbances. So it could be that early morning. You may get up and get that hard thing done first thing and then go for a run and then get into your meetings. Again, that's what I like. 5 a.m. is my time. It's, It's the time that I have no disruptions. Nothing. I can focus on my deep work. I can focus on research. I can focus on preparing for my podcast episodes. I can really plan out the day and see it how I want it to unfold. So certainly making sure you tackle the the hard things first, get the priorities done and fill your day with priorities. That way you don't really want to do. If they come into the picture, you can say, no, I'm fully booked. I don't have, you know, I haven't got any space. I'm completely booked. Oh, sorry, but uh, I just can't. I'm, I'm, I'm booked out. And it's because you're focused on the things that are most important to progressing your career, the things that are most important to your health, things most important to your relationships. So invest time in those places that are most important to you and do them first. Okay. And then set up the day so that it's an achievable day. Don't be unrealistic and just put a big bucket list of all these things because then you'll look at the end of the day and and you'll think that, oh, it wasn't that successful. I only got through half of them. It was because you're unrealistic at the start of the day. Get real with yourself. What is humanly possible? And just have like three or four items and just focus on doing them with your best ability. So I don't try to you know flood my day with podcasting each podcast will put a lot of energy into so I pretty much one podcast per day maybe at a stretch two but one and I do my best to put the best amount of energy everything I've got into that one podcast and so I'm not just filling up my day with podcasts just to get ahead or just to get them done for me I want the best the best that I can do and I find that's about one. The other day I tried to do two. The first one was really good. The second one I started and it was a flunk. I actually, I'm not publishing it. It was just not worth publishing. And so then I redid it the next day and it was so much better. So again, don't 
over exaggerate what you can achieve in a day. Don't just put a bucket list down, prioritize it. So list the things. And if it doesn't need to be done that day, it's not high priority and it's certainly not urgent, then move it out, move it out. Just put it out to another day and and that can be done on another day. But for that day, it's the things that are most important to you. Okay. And if you've been working this way for quite some time, they should be non urgent. So, for example, I do a lot of corporate wellness presentations and I need to prepare slides for each of those presentations. However, what I do is I look ahead when they're due and I aim to like start them at least two weeks before they're due. And so I'm well ahead. I can work and do deep work and do the, my best effort and get the best presentation done because I haven't got that urgent pressure. And, and that's what I'm doing at 5 a.m. in the morning. It's un, uninterrupted. I can think clearly. I'm putting together these corporate wellness presentations. So again, you, you want to orientate your day. So you're working on the highest priorities activities and not just having a full list of things to do and then looking back and think, oh, you know, I was unaccomplished today. But it's rubbish. It's just that you're unrealistic at the start of the day as to what you'll get done. So be realistic with yourself. Set realistic goals for the day. Make sure they're the most prioritized uh, work to be working on. The ones that are going to give you the biggest return on invest investment in terms of your career success, in terms of where you want to go, in terms of getting a great result for your clients. Work on that work and focus on it and just focus on that work until it's done. Don't allow distractions to come into it. Again, you could adopt a bit of the Pomodoro principle. And the Pomodoro principle is having periods of uninterrupted work for a period of time that you can work uninterruptedly. The Pomodoro principle talks about 25 to 35 minutes. I can do you know, up to an hour really focused until I need to get up and go and just sort of clear my head. So like the podcast time is about, it's terrific actually. It's like typically 30 to 45 minutes where I can just focus. I can put huge amounts of energy into it and then and then I can rest. I can have a break. I can uh, just think, wow, that was great. You know, like I feel good afterwards. I'm always energized after this podcast. That's why I'm always, you know, doing as much as I can to keep them up to date and make sure that there's an episode dropping each week. So the other thing is around making those actions happen happen is you can have some reward at the end of it. So once I complete this deep work on this area, then I'm going to have a hot chocolate, for example. And again, you want it to be aligned to your goal. So my hot chocolates are you know, raw cacao, 100% cacao with a bit of molasses. It's the, I guess, the more healthier sugar. (laughs) But molasses and cacao, it's only two ingredients with some milk alternative. I heat it up. I love it. It's delicious. I'll have that after a podcast, for example, because I'm thinking, yeah, that's something I'm really looking forward to. I'm going to give it everything and then reward myself, relax afterwards. And so today, what I'll do is I'll get outside and get some sunshine because I love just sort of sitting in the sun briefly, obviously not getting too much, but just a little bit of sunshine, particularly this time of the year when it's a bit cooler, just to warm up the body, feel that the nice infrared rays without getting too much of the ultraviolet rays. List me. It's another way in which I energize myself and keep myself energized. Again, you could have at the end of each session, uh, each bit of focus work, have a little reward. It might be, I'm going to call a mate who I haven't spoken to for an, you know, a while and have a chat to them and you know, just have five, 10 minute chat to them just to, you know, that's something I haven't done. I'm looking forward to catching up with them. I'm going to do this deep focus work and then catch up with them. Or I'm just going to do this deep focus work, grab a coffee with a friend. And, and again, so just sort of, tying the two together so that you know that uh, you're recognizing the effort you're putting in for that deep focus work and you're going to do it uninterruptedly and then afterwards you've got something to look forward to so make it so that it's enjoyable um, and, and that you are recognizing uh, the you know the uh, you know the really focused work that you've done the other thing is bringing a couple of things together so what i mean by this when i have meetings that I know I don't need to share a screen or I know they're not sharing a screen is it's like a discussion or problem solving or a catch up, you know, just briefing someone where the project's at or where you're at with that task. Do a walk and talk. Uh, So get outside and walk. So you're getting some activity whilst you're doing a meeting. And so I I'll do, I mean, I can't, not every meeting I can do walk and talk. Some meetings I need to be sharing 
my screen. So you, you need to pick and choose your meetings. But if it's like an update meeting or you're a sort of just listen in to get updated and you're not a main participant, then go on mute, go for a walk. And that way you're getting exercise in, you're still getting updated. I find when I'm walking and listening, I am more present. I'm actually way more present when I'm walking and listening. So I find it helps with my retention and, and staying focused because I'm moving. I, I genuinely like to be moving. So sitting still and, you know, for periods of time makes me a bit, I don't know, jittery. And I sort of, hence why I probably move around a lot in the podcast uh, for those watching it on YouTube. So, yeah, so you can combine two things together where possible. And it could be, or when you go to do exercise, you talk to a friend, you catch up with a friend. I see, you know, people doing this is when they're walking, they're talking as well, or they're doing their learning. They're doing their podcast, you know, listening to a podcast. They're learning more about their field of expertise. So just looking at combining activities. I, I, I do it, for example, when I'm, you know, walking to meetings, if there's a flight of stairs I can take rather than an escalator or a lift, I'll take the flight of stairs. That way I I get a bit more activity, you know, sort of get the heart rate going, clear the mind. And so I'm, you know, going to the meeting, but I'm, I'm taking an option that also gives me a bit of more activity and helps my health goals. So looking at combining where you can. So yes, yeah, so pretty much in terms of how to, you know, how to get priority, how to plan, make sure that you're, when you're working from home, you don't get too distracted. And like, for example, if you have washing to do or you need to start cooking the dinner, again, have it at the end of focus work. So don't just think, oh, I've got to get all my tasks out of the way before I start. No, start when you're energized. And then in between meetings or in between focused work, put the washing on. Don't wait for it, the cycle to finish. <laughs> go, go back, do focus work, and then once it's finished, you can then hang it up. Or if you're cooking, for example, it's the same thing. You might want to just get the raw materials out, focus work, come back to the raw materials, chop things up, back to focus work, and then put it on, cook for a little bit, finish the cooking for a little bit, back to focus work, and then further prep or whatever you need to do. But again, it's just allowing yourself or seeing that sort of household chores as a way to break up the day successfully whilst getting work done as opposed to getting all the household chores and then finding more household chores and then at night realizing I didn't really get any work done I better do my work now okay and then that's eating into your sleep time which then creates sleep deprivation and is not going to be good for your health the studies show that with sleep deprivation we eat more the next day <laughs> so you don't want that and you You'll eat more of the foods that you generally think that I should eat less of, such as the ones high in carbohydrates and fats. So that's what I wanted to share around that whole thing around um, planning. And this is also ties into boundaries, okay? So in order to create boundaries, do what I mentioned, plan out your day and then plan in the th the incidental things where you're like, so the things that don't require energy and focus that you can, a bit mundane that are bland, um, such as washing and whatnot, cooking, put them into when you're, you've got lower energy. So when you've got really good energy, do the hard stuff, focus on the hard stuff then because you've got the energy and the resilience to tackle it. You can ta tackle the problems. When you try to tackle the problems and the hard stuff, when you're tired, it gets you, it gets you down and, and you find yourself looking to procrastinate because it, you just it's just too difficult. So do things that you can like, so it could be any task that you find easy that you can do half asleep, factor them in at the end of the day when you're tired. Or it could be if you're tired in the morning, maybe do some of those not so important tasks you still need to do, a bit of admin or whatever it might be, when you've got lower energy and then the, the hard stuff is when you've got higher energy. So work with where your energy, how your energy flows through the day. When my energy dips, I'm not doing podcasts. So that mid-afternoon slump, I'm not doing podcasts. That is when I choose to go out and exercise because my energy then picks up for the afternoon. So I 
don't need a co- like I don't have a coffee. I go out, exercise, get the blood circulating, get the oxygen to my brain, and it enables me then to have quite a productive afternoon without having another coffee or more caffeine, which I know will affect my nighttime sleep. So look at where your energy sort of wavers, or and it could be just after lunch. If you do get tired after lunch, I suggest you eat less at lunch. I find when you eat too much, energy goes towards digestion and away from your brain, and you can't think clearly, and and you. You're tired. There's less oxygen, less glucose going to your brain, and you, you feel tired and sleepy, and you're not productive. So eat less throughout the day. I find that really helps. Uh, don't eat too much. Like if I eat a solid meal in the morning when I'm really hungry because I haven't, I, I eat light at night. I can eat a bit more in the morning, and I don't feel the fatigue because I'm, you know, have huge amounts of energy. Whereas at lunch, I eat really light because I know if I eat a little bit too much i'll be i'll notice it because i don't have the same energy as the morning morning's my best period and then the other thing is making sure you factor in and plan things like that are important to holistic health so relationships making sure you're factoring that into your weekly plan and scheduling that in when are you going to do that when is a good time of the week to you know catch up with a, a bestie or catch up with you know check in with family so Pick your times and, and, and book it in. Book it into yourself. Uh, so that, that way it gets done. Otherwise, you think, yeah, I'll get around to that. It doesn't happen. So you need to book time, block out time, schedule time, and it will happen. So make sure you do it to keep relationships strong. Keep investing time into relationships, quality time into relationships, and they'll get stronger. Because anyway, where you're not investing time, particularly if it's important to you, that's where issues are going to arise. Okay, so make sure you're investing the time in areas that are most important to you, okay? And then create the boundaries around you working from home. So have a designated area where you work. That way, you know, when you're in that area, you're working. When you're away from that area, you're you're not. If you can't, if there's no physical boundaries, you can put tape on the ground. And so that as soon as you step over that tape, I'm in home mode. I'm out of work mode. I leave my computer and my phone in the office. And then I'm stepping over that line. I'm in work mode, family mode. And it just having that mental barrier shift. And it could be like if you don't want to put tape on the ground because and you don't have physical walls. It may be turning a lamp on. So when you turn the lamp on, that means you're in work mode or study mode. And then when the light goes off, that means it's over. It's not like you're trying to do two things at once. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to be a parent. I'm trying to be a good partner. Otherwise, you're torn between both and you're not doing either of either of them successfully because you're only putting half energy into both, right? So this will help you put full energy, full presence into the area that you want to be in when you're when you choose to. So having if you can't have that physical barrier where you've got a, a physical wall and you walk out a door to show that I've left the office. I'm now in other parts of the house. This is when I put my parent hat on, or this is when I put my partner hat on. If you don't have that, as I said, you can put tape on the floor just to remind you, or you could put, you know, turn the lamp on, light on and off. Or for me, I lock the screen. I lock the screen and and shut it. So the the, the computer's off. I I'm fortunate enough, I have an office that's physically dislocated from the house. I have to walk downstairs. So when I'm walking downstairs, I'm thinking, okay, I'm in parent mode, I'm in partner mode, I'm in all that sort of stuff as opposed to trying to work downstairs, upstairs. And yeah, it becomes very messy and people realize that you're not present and you're not doing either good, right? You're not doing your work really good to its highest quality and you're not being the best partner, the best parents. So make sure there's clear delineation between the two that way and you're either one or the other. You're either wearing your work hat or you're putting on your parent partner hat, okay? So make sure there's clear delineation. And the other one that helps me is the night setting. So I put my laptop and also my phone onto night mode. So it automatically goes on to night mode at, at um, sunset and turns off at sunrise. And so between sunset and sunrise is where I don't do the screen time. And I realize it is that time because my screen becomes very yellow and very red and it's not sexy. It's not, hasn't got that clear picture. 
and that's what the blue and the white light gives it that clarity uh it goes very i don't know very warm um but it, it, it is hard to work you can't really see that well and so that's a reminder to me ah oh, it's night time it's time to do nighttime things so use technology to your advantage switch on the settings to night mode so it goes on to it, it and essentially what the device does is filter out the white and the blue light and so therefore it's predominantly yellow and red which isn't that sexy to look at and you think okay that's a good reminder it's time for me to do nighttime things start relaxing unwinding to get a good night's sleep the other thing i like about night mode particularly on the iphone is that it silences messages and everything notifications and even phone calls <laughs> so once it's on night mode uh, i'm off i'm off i don't get any i don't hear anything i don't hear any bing bing and so i can just focus on my night and enjoying my night enjoying dinner with the family catching up with everyone as to how their day was and then focusing on what I want to you know I go through that reflection as to yeah did I get what I wanted to do that day oh uh, yeah I did I know this is hanging over so then I put it to tomorrow okay I, yeah I didn't get through my list so be it um things took a bit longer but I'll put that thing for tomorrow that way I'm not thinking about it that night so this is what I refer to professor a Russian psychologist refers to, I think he was a professor uh, or doctor, but uh, the Zinganic effect. And so what Zinganic found was if you didn't put closure to things, it would ruminate on your mind. It will stay on your mind. So it will. So if you don't, if I just think, oh, I haven't done that task, I need to do it tomorrow and just leave it in my mind, it will continue to ruminate and continue. Uh, so what he found is if you don't bring closure to it, such as write it on paper, I'm going to do it tomorrow, I'll put a reminder to do it tomorrow if you don't do that then what happens is that it just constantly plays on your mind and affects your ability to fall asleep and to stay asleep so get it on paper get it out of your mind stop allowing it to ruminate and manifest get it out uh, so that's that's what I go through a reflection every evening as to yeah what I got done what I didn't get done what needs to carry over for tomorrow and then I start thinking what are the high priority things for tomorrow making sure I've already got them down and so I just go through this sort of planning exercise or and reflection exercise each night at the end of the day once my nighttime setting goes on once that once I start seeing that yellow and red light. So a good tip for you <laughs> to do that, right? So I mentioned making sure, just want to touch on it again, making sure that you're not only planning your work and planning high priority work, but planning activities in areas that are important to you beyond work. So such as in health, I mentioned exercise before, but then also factoring in time to eat well. So that means you might need to factor factor in a bit of prep time to actually go and buy the food to prepare the food and so that you're eating well during the week otherwise you get caught out oh there's nothing in the house i'll order uber eats and generally what you order out is not as good as what you cook at home generally speaking so pl plan you know if eating well is important to you put aside time to order like to do online grocery shopping to go to the shops and then to prepare your food for the week so that you're covered so that you're not caught out and needing to order takeaway because you're too busy so in addition to that plan time like if relationships are really important for you and family connection and all that plan time for family connection plan time for relationships because if you don't then things will fester and fester in the way that you don't want them to because you're not allowing time to communicate effectively or to open up or to share things that need to be shared so factoring in time to do that and again you can stack it with other things so you can do a walk and talk with your partner so that you can share update and share what's you know how you're feeling and all that sort of stuff with your partner whilst you're both walking side by side shoulder to shoulder going for a walk so you're getting some exercise together and you're also updating each other and sharing what's going on and how you're feeling and where you'd like more support or where you're challenged and you know where, where can I get the extra support from all those sort of stuff so doing that can be really helpful also uh, around exercise like you could choose to plan it with friends and that way you're catching up with friends regularly and you're exercising you're doing both so you're seeing friends and exercising and you're connecting them both and some days you won't feel like exercising but because you've already made that commitment to be there with your friends you're going to show up because you don't want to let your friends down and so therefore your health benefits as well as your friendship 
benefits. So it's a double win. So look where you can have those double wins so that you, you leverage your time and you optimize the limited time we have. We, we, we all only have 24 hours. And just with relationships, really focus on the quality of the relationship as opposed to thinking, I just need to catch up with everyone. No, focus on the ones that are highest priority to you. Focus on the relationships that you know that person will be there for you in times of need. And they've demonstrated that in the past. So invest time in those relationships and prioritize those relationships. Don't worry about the other ones. You know, the other ones should come secondary. So it's it's all about the depth of the relationship is most important to our health and longevity, the depth of the relationship, the Longest ever study done on happiness and health demonstrates that relationships are first and foremost, and it's the depth of the relationship that matters most, okay? So make sure you do that is you focus on the quality of the relationship as opposed to spreading yourself too thin. In terms of keeping optimistic and upbeat about working in a hybrid environment, again, it's about setting a vision and making sure that vision is clear as to where you're going with it all, okay? And finding what works best for you. So understanding that maybe, you know, in terms of, yeah, you, you like a, 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 cup, a day or two days at home and you find that you can cope with that and you're not procrastinating too much or not being distracted too much. And then you find, you know, three or four days in the office is really good and productive to be with colleagues and getting work done. And, and the great thing about going into the office is that there's clear delineation between work and home. And I mean, it's a bit, I guess, obscure in today's world because we have mobile devices such as laptops and mobile phones. But be clear and set boundaries with your colleagues as to when you're on and when you're off. And you can leave out of office messengers saying, I've finished for the day. I'm valuing my health and well-being so I can be utmost productive the next day. Uh, yeah, leave a message. <laughs> um, so again, you've got to create the boundaries, even though there may be some physical delineation, you need to create those boundaries. But then finding that, as I said, what that mix that works for you in terms of working from home and working in the office and really uh, having a vision as to what you want to achieve in that day, what you want to achieve in that week, that month, that you know quarter, that half year, that end of year. So having a clear vision of what you want to have accomplished and making sure that you then break down that clear vision into daily actions so that you're taking daily actions towards that vision. And that's how you want to measure a successful day. Am I moving towards my vision? Have I done things today that have taken me towards my vision? And that's how you want to measure success and not compared to someone else in the office or compared to a friend or someone else. You want to measure yourself against your daily actions towards what's most important to you. And that's your vision of what you want to create in your life. So making sure you have that vision, that way you can stay focused on the, the, the bigger picture and then just taking daily actions towards that bigger picture. So I, I find people, this is where people get tripped up with weight loss, for example. They're so focused on the scales as opposed to the bigger picture in terms of what they want to, how they want to feel, how they want to look and, and who they want to be around a new healthier them. And they're just so fixated on the scales, which do fluctuate with fluid retention based on stress and based on the level of activity and how much you're drinking and not drinking and all these, there's so many factors that can affect that daily scale. And they're measuring their health success by just looking at the scale. It's not the greatest measure for, for the, the, the bigger picture. It's just one piece of the puzzle. So what you want to be focused on is the daily actions you're taking towards that, that healthier version of you. Have you done your exercise for the day? Have you done your 30 minutes of exercise? That's what you want to measure as opposed to, oh, the scales haven't moved. Oh, you know, nothing's working. Forget the scales. You can look at the scales in six months' time. What I want you to do is focus on the daily actions that are taking you towards a new, healthier you. And so that will be reducing consumption of processed foods. So today I cooked all my meals, I prepared all my meals. I didn't that's a win, right? I didn't order any takeaway or have any fast foods and things like that. So that's a win. I you know, and that was one of my goals was I'm going to eat at home more, I'm going to cook more, I'm going to use more fresh produce, I'm going to save some money and not keep buying Uber Eats. I also went for a 30-minute walk today. That's another win. Okay, so these are the things you've 
addressed your diet, you've addressed your exercise. I've also honored my stress management and my sleep and re recovery and rejuvenation by not doing work after 6 p.m. once the sun goes down. I've allowed myself to focus on relaxing in the evening so I can get a good night's sleep. Okay, that's another win. I also delivered on my daily activities around a friend. I saw that friend. I you know, deepened the relationship with them. You want to measure yourself against the daily actions that are taking you towards the vision that you have of yourself, of what you want to achieve. Okay, that's, that's the only comparison you want to do. And that way you'll stay on focus and you'll brighter outlook because you're measuring yourself against doing the daily actions as opposed to worrying about what other people are achieving and doing. They, they have a complete unique set of goals and objectives and they're probably differing to yours. Most likely they are. And so why compare yourself to them? It's not worth it. it it's, a, it's not comparing apples to apples. It's comparing apples to oranges. So compare yourself to your daily actions and go about doing that continuously and that's the only comparison you want to do and then check the scales in six months time and you'll be really surprised you you will get away from those daily fluctuations and you'll see the significant step change okay that's more exciting okay as much as it can be thinking oh, i feel a lot better i'm going to jump on the scales it can be disheartening as well stay away from it just measure yourself based on your daily actions and whether you've fulfilled those daily actions and worry about looking at the scales or tape measurements and stuff like that periodically, like every three months or every six months, but not every day, because there will be some slight fluctuations based on various factors I mentioned before. Stay focused on the bigger picture and those daily actions to take you towards that bigger picture. Now, I mentioned stress management is a really important part of this overall puzzle, and particularly in the whole scheme of holistic health and keeping you focused and on track, working from home remotely. As I said, not doing back-to-back -back meetings, allowing time between meetings. In between those meetings, that's when you want to allow yourself to become mindful and not distracted. And so doing some breathing exercises between meetings, a short meditation, getting up and moving, connecting with nature, stepping outside, connecting with nature will really ground you and get you present, reduce the stress and will enable you not to have stress built up through the day because what can happen is if we're not getting out the stress during the day it builds up and it becomes so big in the evening you're looking for a massive stress relief and some people open a bottle of wine in order to give that massive stress relief and then that doesn't serve you because that's a whole lot of extra calories that you probably don't want and it affects your sleep that night and you wake up tighter the next day so a better way to manage the stress is managing it periodically through the day so it doesn't build up and balloon and get so big that it's about to explode unless you have a bottle of wine. Uh, release the valve during the day in between meetings or when you feel under a bit of stress. Don't allow that stress to then compound. Alleviate it through doing some breathing exercises or getting mindful doing some mindfulness activities, whatever that is for you. Maybe your exercise, that can be where you you know, get rid of the stress. Hitting a punching bag or doing something that relieves your stress or ringing a friend that makes you laugh and takes you away from, you know, re reduces the stress load and you see the lighter side of life. So it could be any of those things. Do what grounds you, relaxes you and do it throughout the day as opposed to allowing it to compound and become a big issue at the end of the day, which then affects your sleep. Okay, you don't want that. Um, so do it during the day. Don't allow it to build up. That's very much what I wanted to cover today. All those three areas, as I just want to close, we, we discussed planning and make sure you plan the highest priority task based on your vision, okay? And work towards those highest priority tasks and only compare your daily actions towards whether you've done those highest priority tasks and don't compare yourself to others. Uh, stay on track by regularly going back to the plan. What did you plan today? Don't allow the distractions to take you away. If it's not in the plan, put it aside to do at a later day if it's important, but it's not in the plan for that day unless for some reason it becomes super urgent and important and maybe it's a client demand as such. So then you might need to shuffle things a bit. As I said, make sure you work on that plan and only on that plan. Do the Pomodoro principle, stay focused, do focus periods of work and then have a break and then reward yourself in some way. 
stepping outside, getting some sunshine or having a hot chocolate like I suggested. And stick to your boundaries. Stay true to your boundaries. Don't deviate from those boundaries. Stick to them like, yeah, there's no gray. It's just hard, hard and fast because that will going to keep you healthy, safe and will keep you productive and energized. It's when we dilute the boundaries between work and we don't do either. As I said, we don't do either really good. We become mindless essentially. Uh, and we're not completely present in what we're doing. So delineate, Uh, make sure you have clear delineation and let people know when you're on and when you're off, okay? And just make sure it's clear in your mind and stay true to those boundaries because it will keep you safe, it will keep you healthy. And yes, there may be times where you need to breach it, but it shouldn't be the norm, okay? It shouldn't be the norm. And don't do it because everyone else is doing it. That is not, because you become unproductive, you become burnt out, you you, you get sick and there Therefore, they get behind. So focus on your daily actions, focus on what you're doing, look after yourself, and you always have upbeat energy, you have more resilience, and you'll be getting stuff done towards your vision. Okay, and don't forget to nurture relationships. As I said, it's really important to nurture and prioritize relationships, work on the priorities, and don't worry about spread, you know, don't spread yourself too thin. Uh, It's much better to have deeper, higher quality relationships. So I hope that helps you today in terms of being mentally tough in a virtual reality world. If you've enjoyed the episode and you find someone that's struggling with that hybrid work environment, please share this episode with them. It might give them some insights, some tips, some gems as to what they can do to make themselves more productive, to keep their energy up, to keep them focused. I really appreciate your ears. Thank you for listening again. I'd love you to share it with others. Make sure you follow what I shared today. And as I say, don't you don't necessarily have to follow everything, but just implement one thing, one gem today, and that will make a difference. Thank you. Podcast disclaimer. This podcast and any information, advice, opinions, or statements within it do not constitute medical, healthcare, or professional advice and are provided for general information purposes only. All care is taken in the preparation of the information in this podcast. Connected Wellness Proprietary Limited, operating under the brand Me and My Health Up, does not make any representations or give any warranties about its accuracy, reliability, completeness, or suitability for any particular purpose. This podcast and any information, advice, opinions, or statements within it are not to be used as a substitute for professional, medical, psychological, psychiatric, or any other mental health care or health care in general. Me and My Health Up recommends you seek the advice of a doctor or qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Inform your doctor of any changes that you may to your lifestyle and discuss these with your doctor. Do not disregard medical advice or delay visiting a medical professional because of something you hear in this podcast. This podcast has been carefully prepared on the basis of current information. Changes in circumstances after publication may affect the accuracy of this information. To the maximum extent permitted by the law, Me and My Health Up disclaims any such representations or warranties to the completeness, accuracy, merchantability, or fitness for purpose of this podcast and will not be liable for any expenses, losses, damages, incurred indirect or consequential damages or costs that may be incurred as a result of the information being inaccurate or incomplete in any way and for any reason. No part of this podcast can be reproduced, redistributed, published, copied, or duplicated in a form without prior permission of me and my health up.